host Dana with Empower RV and Brenda with Queen Bee RV. We are in Athens, Texas at the National RV Training Academy bringing you another episode of 52 Ways to Empower Women RVers. Today we want to talk about something we go over in our classes that is super important as far as people get so frustrated sometimes when they come across troubleshooting issues mm -hmm. and just get overwhelmed and think my RV is broken, it's breaking all the time when actually resolving most of the issues is pretty simple. I tell um, students here a lot that it, it, a lot of times it's user error right. and just not understanding how things are powered, how they operate. So we always start with basic electrical knowledge in our mm -hmm. classes. They do it here at the Academy and Dana and I do it in our classes too. So today we wanted to go over just a simple understanding of the voltage systems in the RV and what powers what components and systems. So you have two voltage systems, a 12 volt DC voltage system and then the 120 volts AC in the RV. You've got chassis voltage, which we will not go into today, but that's coming from your tow vehicle mm -hmm. or your engine if you have a motorized. And then you also have a coach battery. Those are 12 volt DC. And then you have the 120 volts AC, which sometimes we refer to as shore power. And that is coming from um, wherever we're plugged in. It could right. be at a campground, it could be at somebody's home, wherever. So let's start with the components. If you can go over, can you talk about what's powered by the coach battery? That's the one that's inside our RV. Absolutely. So one thing I want to mention is that sometimes people, I've heard people, women who come to our events say, well, my battery's dead, but everything in my RV still works. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're plugged into shore power. And when they're plugged into shore power, that 120 volt is being sent to the camper, sent through the converter, right. and then basically bypassing, running yeah, running all the 12 volt systems. Right. So just because you have a dead battery doesn't mean you're not necessarily going to be able to use your 12 volt system. Right. But there's so many components with the 12 volt system that when you're traveling down the road and you don't have that shore power like the LP detector, mm -hmm. um, not, maybe not necessarily that while you're traveling, but the LP detector is important, but the, um, the trailer braking system. Right. So you want to make sure that if you're 12 volt, if you know you have a dead battery, right. and even though you can still power everything, I went super well, important. Well, we've had some women not realize that theirs was dead, dead, D-E-A-D, right. -E dead, because they were plugged in all the time. And then there was lots of safety systems that would not have right. been operative, like you said. So that's okay. important. So let's go over a little bit about what is powered in your camper with the 12 volt um, battery on your camper. So some of the components are the interior lights. Most RVs, newer RVs, um, maybe a few really, really old ones will still have the 120, but most of us have the LED lights inside our camper, mm -hmm. which is why when you're arriving at the campground before you get hooked up, you're always able to go in and flip on a light switch because your battery is actually powering that. Another instance is your water pump. You pull over on the side of the road, somebody needs to go to the bathroom or wash their hands, um, you flip on that water pump so that you can draw water from your fresh water system into your camper without being hooked up. That's actually a 12 volt system that works. Nice. Another one is your appliance controls. So many of our appliances actually start, they, are, you know, they start with a 12 volt and then they'll be run with 120. But a lot of your appliances require that initial 12 volt operation to begin. Right. So that's important. Slides and leveling systems, if you have a camper that has a slide out or has the auto leveling, you're able to use those components without being plugged into a 120 volt or shore power. Those are operating off of our 12 volt system. Your vent fans, again, you may go into the restroom, you may need to turn on that vent fan, or you have want to draw that heat out of the camper yeah. when you get to a campground before you, um, just to make the AC work a little le less hard, you might open that vent fan to, to draw that heat out. That's a 12 volt system. Uh, your furnace blower fan, again, part of our appliances, you know, you need that 12 volt to get the kickstart before mm -hmm. it's being run with, with another form, but a furnace blower fan is a 12 volt operating system. And then some of our electronics. I know we have some inverter um, things in our campers mm -hmm. that allow us to run TVs and stuff like that mm -hmm. through, um, through 12 volt because we're actually sending it through an inverter and it's inventing the 120 mm -hmm. volt power. But some of our electronics are 12 volt right. as well. And they're, they're, getting, they're advancing in they the are. RV industry yeah. and, and coming up with more and more 12 volt systems. But I wanna point out, if you ever have an issue with any of these, when you look at your 
um, control board in your camper, if you have a 12 volt issue with something like this and it's not working, the first thing you're gonna do is go check a fuse. Our 12 volt systems, we're gonna look at the fuse panel side. Of where our, is that? They're in the camper, you just have to find where yours is located, but it's in the-, the Near the electrical. The electrical out, the electrical box where you're panel gonna box. have, panel box where you'll have your breakers and your fuses. Anything that's operating 12 volt, um, you're gonna check for, fu for blown fuses. How do you know if it's blown? Uh, depends on your camper. Some of them will illuminate. The, mm -hmm. uh, the actual fuse will have will turn red or green. Mm -hmm. It'll light up if it's blown. If you can't actually, mine doesn't actually do that, but I can, if I know I'm experiencing a problem specific to like a, a blower fan, I can go to my fuse panel box. It's usually labeled. Find the label that matches what I think is wrong, pull that fuse, and I can check it with like a little pin light mm -hmm. to make sure it's like a light bulb, just to make sure that little filament is still connected. Right. And then if I can't tell, I would probably just replace it with a new one and see if that solves the problem. But usually it's pretty obvious. And that's a great point. You just brought that up. Bring a little extra package. Oh, have a package, a variety pack. You can get them at like O'Reilly's, any of the auto parts stores. But before you go, kind of know which ones your camper right. has because there's about 300 different and choices. And how do you know? Um, I actually take a picture of my panel box, mm -hmm. take the, and I t I'll take one with me. I'll pull one out just so I have the right um, width because some of them right, can be different, different kind widths. Of different There's sizes. all kinds of different ones, and, and technicians know that you don't always have the one that you need when exactly. you need it. But these are all pretty basic, so mm -hmm. I would take a, a sample with you before you pick up your little sample box, but always travel with fuses. Okay, that was all great information. Let's go over the 120 volt systems, and this is a much shorter list, kind of. Um, this is the bigger ticket appliance, right. <laughs> uh, you know, appliances, components, and systems in the RV. 120 volts AC, that's when you're plugged in, you might be mooched off at somebody's house and plugged in like you're on their driveway you might be at the campground so let's go over these systems the air conditioner is the most <laughs> obvious one what Dana said before the thermostat is controlled by 12 volts DC and then it mm -hmm. tells the air conditioner to kick on and we'll cover the AC in another uh, time as far right. as how much of that voltage and watts and amps that it uses, but it's a big hog. So <laughs> the air conditioner, the microwave, the refrigerator, a lot of us have an absorption style RV uh, refrigerator that will run on propane and 120 mm -hmm. volts AC. Some of us are now um, getting residential style mm -hmm. refrigerators that run a, have a compressor right. in there. So the refrigerator, the electronics, there are some electronics that might be hardwired in. There might be some that are just plugged into receptacles, which brings me to all the outlets. That's what we right. call those sometimes receptacles, the wall outlets, the water heater, like Dana and I have uh, talked about in other videos, the water heaters are always propane. Some are also electric. And again, and any of these that have a control switch or control panel or whatnot, mm -hmm. they have some type of brains in there that's being run by 12 volt DC. So a lot of these are in tandem and you'll have to narrow it down. The power converter is always using 120 volts AC, like Dana mentioned, and it could be operating some of those 12 volt right. systems, but it uses 120 volts to be able to charge your battery and talk to the 12 volt system. And then, like she said, some of the interior lights, some of the overhead interior lights and older rigs might might be 120. So what we suggest is making a list. We call it a cheat sheet yep. until you get this stuff memorized. It took us a long time. I'm still learning. Every I time know. I come back here, I learn something new. It, so. it takes a long time to remember which ones are which, but what's helpful is when you have that frustration and something is not on, look and see, are all the outlets out, you know, not operative, right. or maybe it's just one. Maybe it's the GFCI outlet mm -hmm. that was tripped. Is it just the air conditioner? Just think it through about which Voltage and if they system. feel like they have a 120 volt issue, where are they going to go look? Oh, thank you very much. So at the electrical panel box, there could be, first of all, start at the pedestal. Wherever True. you're plugged in, make sure it's securely plugged in, mm -hmm. that you don't have an error code on your EMS system, the mm -hmm. surge protector system. So make sure the breaker's on there. Look inside your electrical panel box. Maybe your main breaker coming mm -hmm. into the uh, panel box is tripped and, and or maybe it's specifically for that appliance, like just the refrigerator or the air conditioner. The air conditioner tripping is a common one. Mm -hmm. And don't be fooled. All the breakers might look like they're in the correct position, right. but if you touch it, it touch wiggles. It, right. It's not quite solid. And it's you'll know, you'll turn it turn to it the off. off position mm -hmm. and back on and it will be firm. It'll be that resistance. It, it kind of gives a little resistance when exactly. it kicks back on. Exactly. Yeah. So we hope that this is helpful. You guys make those cheat sheets until you get this stuff memorized and you can troubleshoot on your own. If you like this content, let us know with the 
thumbs up and comment below. Be sure to follow us on 52 Ways and Counting on all social media, and we'll see you next week on another episode.